Welcome to the MSI channel where I try to resurrect an old MSI 8080 computer. All right, so if you want to uh, get something just for your, just for fun, uh, this is an Arduino land. Uh, this is a SparkFun uh, board. It is a uh, SpeakJet, which I believe is just a PIC processor that has some basically recorded pho phonemes in it. It is a phoneme generator, but I think they're sort of recorded into ROM. It doesn't have a lot of filtering and things like that, so it doesn't try to do glottals and all the fancy things. But it, but it is a nice little board. It has a built-in uh, uh, amplifier, so uh, you can hook up a speaker. And, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll give you an example of, uh, of it talking. Here's the data sheet for the uh, SpeakJet chip. Um, it's much smaller. Um, it has a serial input, so it doesn't have any addressing or anything like that. So it's just, uh, I think it defaults to 9600 baud um, serial input. And um, has some other pins that are events, so you can program it to do certain things on hardware events. So it's more of a robotic type chip. If something happens, have it say something. Something else happens, have it say something else. But it is a phoneme chip. Um, let's see here. Hook it up to a speaker the same way uh, that you do the other the other chip. Uh, so here's how it works: as a serial input, um, a buffer uh, to watch the data come in. And then there's this MSA, which is basically all of the uh, ROM coding of all of the phonemes um, and five channel synthesizers. So they are trying to break it down into certain uh, parts of the voice and, and add and subtract them uh, to create to create sound. Um, you can see here's how here's how they say they're doing it. They have uh, different oscillators uh, and envelope generators, distortion, and they mix those together in different ways. So. Um, and it's a pulse modulated um, signal output. So. And let's see, I'll skip to the end here. I think uh, there's a bunch of stuff that you can have it do. But uh, the interesting thing here is the uh, uh, the hex patterns that you, uh, these are actually decimal, uh, the, the patterns that you send it to do different things. So these are all the phonemes and the associated numbers that go with the phonemes. Um, there's also a bunch of, uh, uh, up here in the 200s, uh, there's a bunch of uh, beeps and bops, uh, robot sounds, R2-D2 sounds. Uh, so that's kind of cool. If you're building a robot, you can make it sound like R2-D2. They're, they're encoded pretty nicely. Um, so anyway, it is a fun chip. Um, I don't know why they haven't caught on, but uh, uh, I think you can still find them. It's packaged nice. There it is. Wow, is it crusty? <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's zoom in and take a look. Okay, so I believe this is a card for an old XT uh, computer, or AT computer, or something, an old IBM, um, and it has an ST part, which is a an EEPROM, a 27C64, so it probably had a bunch of canned speech in it uh, that fed the, the speech chip that I'm interested in. And uh, I think you can read that. Um, it's not an SSI chip, it says Arctic. Um, now, if you read the internet, you'll find out that Arctic uh, purchased SSI and they relabeled uh, the chip. So an Arctic 263 is exactly an SSI 263. So that may be one of the reasons I got this card cheap. I only paid $24 for it, which was a real deal. I'm just going to pull out the chip, throw away the rest probably. But um, yeah, that was a great price for this chip. Um, and it'll allow us to get, uh, get the MSI up and running. That'll be great. All right. 
So, um, I want to connect up the SSI 263 chip, and uh, we're going to use um, we're going to use this board. Uh, this is my Centronics interface, and I'm never going to hook that up. So, um, I will reuse the board. And the nice thing about this board is it has a lot of the circuitry that we're going to need. Um, and really, uh, since we have, have so much room on this prototyping board, uh, we'll put the, uh, uh, the 263 chip and then uh, we'll also add an um, audio amplifier. So we'll just have to hook up a speaker to this thing and we'll be, we'll be all set to go. And we'll use an LM386 uh, uh, chip, I believe, for the audio amplifier. I should have a few of those laying around. All right, let's look at the schematic for this board. Um, so we have um, um, we have uh, eight data out lines and eight data input lines, and we have buffers for those. So if we want to send things to data out, there's an enable pin. And if we want to bring data in, there's a not enable pin. So this one's uh, low logic, this one's high logic. So we have to keep that in mind. And then the other thing this provides is a, um, a way to take a look at addressing and see if we are, are at the right address or not. And you can have these dip switches closed to a certain pattern. If you match the pattern, then it outputs the signal here called not match. So uh, again, low logic uh, match. And here's the schematic uh, for data coming into the board. Uh, there's a high logic uh, uh, enable for that. And for data going out of the board, uh, there's a, um, a low logic uh, data in enable for that. Then there's a comparator um, that's looking at uh, A2 through A7. And if this switches, match the, the inputs, um, it, it generates this not match signal. Okay. Um, the other, so that, that explains, uh, that explains this much of the board. Uh, those are all, uh, come standard with the board. And, um, I've added two chips. Uh, for the Centronics interface, so let's take a look at what I added. I added this circuitry, which is basically a bunch of AND gates. Uh, there's a, a input cycle, which is a port input cycle, and there's also a data bus in, saying the microprocessor is requesting uh, input. Um, so you need to AND those two together. Both of these signals have to be true. Uh, in order for things to be right. So the first thing is an AND gate. The same thing on the on the output. There's an output signal and a uh, uh, basically uh, uh, the same thing, a write, uh, a write command. So I'm going to output to the bus and also I'm doing a write. Unfortunately these are all positive logic. This one's a negative logic so we need to invert it. So, um, so we have uh, input anded with data bus in, and we have output anded with write. And then, um, so we also want to and those, we only want those to be true if we're talking to the right address, which is the not match signal. So uh, these are also just uh, and gates. Uh, I don't know if you know the trick, but if you have a, um, a symbol, let's say an OR symbol. If you put NOTs everywhere, you can then change the shape of that signal to an AND signal. Okay, So these are equivalent. Um, any Anytime you just negate all of the input and output pins and you change the shape. So this actually looks like a NOT NOT AND gate with a NOT output so these two knots gate negate each other, so it's just like these two are anded together, and that goes into another and, 
and we're going to and that with not match, it gets inverted into match. So it's just a triple. These three gates, the two gates, act just as a triple, triple input and gate. This and this and this have to be true in order to give us this signal, and it's a low logic signal, so we have a bubble in the output, so everything's good to go. This is going to be the same way. It's going to be a not, 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 and gate. And we'll have a, a negative uh, version of that and also a positive version of that. Uh, I needed both, I guess. So, uh, we have a pulse that basically says write and a pulse that says read. And then we're ready to go. Uh, that's really all we need on the board. So we'll just reuse that circuitry for our, um, our 263 chip. Let's take a look at the 263 chip. Um, I have its data sheet here. Uh, we have some pins. It's 24 pins. So the first pin is the analog output. So that will go to our amplifier. Uh, analog ground, uh, a don't use pin, uh, an acknowledge pin. So this is going to be a handshake signal back. So uh, the only data that goes into that chip is an 8-bit word. And then the only data that comes out of that chip is one single bit. And that's this bit. This bit is an open collector, so it'll need a pull-up on it. Uh, don't use. And then we have uh, register select 0, 1, and 2. So there's eight registers that we can talk to. So we're going to have to um, connect those. So the way that we're going to connect those is we're going to... Um, let's, see, let's, use, let's use this. Um, we're going to have... Uh, three connectors to register select zero, register select one, and register select two, and we're going to connect those to A0, A1, and A2, right? So, um, that's all we have to do there. Unfortunately, A2 is already being used. It's part of this address select. Bit 0 and bit 1s are not used, but bit 2 is used. So we're going to have to uh, cut this and um, not use it. And uh, we will wire that over to here. So we will use bits A0, A1, and A2 for the three registers. And then we have data bus 0, 1, 2, digital ground, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we will take eight data lines into the chip and those will be these eight uh, these go into the uh, card so we'll wire these up to the um, uh, to the chip these are going to be uh, d0 through d7 okay and then uh, we need to get one out of the chip uh, I guess we can use data bit zero. Uh, that's going to be going to this chip called, a uh, pin called A slash not R. A slash not R. It's open collector, so it will need a pull up. Okay, so that'll go out. And then we also have a, a reset, uh, let's see, a reset low. So we'll just pull that high. We have a chip select input. We'll high, we'll pull that high. Chip select output low, we'll pull that low. So this says don't reset. Chip select, chip select. And then um, we have a, uh, a write or a read. And I believe we'll just be able to tie that to uh, write only. So we'll just tie this low. Just enable the right part of it. Um, you don't need a... Uh, this pin is independent. You don't need to tell the direction of this pin. It's always an output. Uh, these data lines, D0 through D7, can either be input or output. But we're only going to use this as input. We're only going to write to this device. Then clock. We'll have to find clock on the, um, on the S100 bus. And it says here 1 megahertz or 2 megahertz. 
and there's a divider internal to the chip. You can divide by two if the clock is two megahertz. So I guess it's looking for a um, a one megahertz clock. So we'll use the oscilloscope and we'll um, use my um, my little card. We'll use this card to go probe some signals. Um, there is a clock pin on pin 49 and I'm going to look at that and see what uh, what speed that is and what signal levels those are. I think that's a, a TTL level clock. And it's either a 2 megahertz or a um, or a 1 megahertz. We'll take a look. And then uh, plus 5. So there we go. Uh, we should be able to then hook this thing up. Uh, I looked around for people who have done this on other um, circuits. I found an Arduino project where somebody hooked up a uh, 263. So they have uh, A0 going out to a speaker connector, the ground. They use that A slash R chip coming into the chip. Here's their pull up. So that's the open collector. They're sending it in t into uh, an input into the Arduino. Uh, they have uh, three pins here for RS0, 1, and 2. They can select the eight different ports. And then the uh, data bus. And then for the reset and chip selects, they just have them tied high or low to always enable the clock. Uh, read slash write, they have connected to somewhere. So they probably have it connected to a pin to be able to do either one. But I don't, I don't care about reading. I only care about writing. And then they have a clock pin coming in, and they're just using a clock generator hit chip here. They're, they're generating their own clock uh, to shove in here. Uh, I found another schematic um, uh, for something. I don't know what it's for, but it's for a bus, a bus system. So, um, but again, um, I think this is everything we need uh, as well. They have a, a clock going in. Uh, their data line, or their uh, address selects are going to an address lines. So everything is, everything is great. So if we want to use the software that I wrote as is, our R0, 1, and 2 are going to be high to tied to ad address lines uh, a0, A1, and A2. And the base address, 0, 0, 0, the base address up to A7 was E0. E0. Um, so they had, um, I wrote, 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 wrote this backwards, but A7 has to be a 1, A6 has to be a 1, A5 has to be a 1, and then everybody else can be 0. Um, so that was E0, E0, there we go. Uh, so we'll set the uh, address lines to take a look at A3 to be 0, A4 to be 0, A5 to be 1, A6 to be 1, and A7 to be 1. And that should be our E0. Um, and we need to cut and jump that A2 so it's not used. And I think that'll be good. Yeah. So uh, I think maybe the next thing to do is uh, let's take a look at our system and see if we have a clock and, and what speed that clock is.